Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Look what I've got, a Gishelli Labs Daisy DAC. It is quite an interesting bit of kit. Sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about this compelling DAC. So the Gishelli Daisy, it's a very fascinating product. Uh, Gino Gishelli's lavished all his engineering talent on this and he's done a, a magnificent job. So it is the next evolution of the J2S and J3 product in that instead of a single set of DAC chips, the 4499-4191 combination, it has two. So it's a fully balanced chassis inside. And let's talk about those DAC chips real quick. So AKM developed this technology they call Velvet Sound Verita. And it started with the 4490 and 4493 chips. Now the 4499 and 4493 were single chips and they kind of divided the chip in half and I'll explain why. I've done recently some reviews on R to R DACs and R to R DACs, the thing about a resistor ladder DAC or a resistor multi-bit DAC is it can decode 16-bit or 24-bit PCM without oversampling. And I think that's really important. And I'll talk about why in just a second. All Delta Sigma DACs have to oversample to decode because they can't decode the complete 16-bit or 24-bit word. And the R to R DACs can't really either, but they, there is some clever ways they get around it. Because if you were to decode a full 16-bit word, you'd need 16 16.7 million resistors. So if you remember in any kind of uh, paint program or Windows or, or Mac, 24-bit color is 16.7 million colors. It's the same thing. So with resistors, they do cascading and things like that. In a Delta Sigma chip, what happens is, is the signal comes in either on SPDIF or on USB. So it goes through a SPDIF receiver or USB receiver, and then it's timed with the oscillator clock as it goes into the processor. And the processor then de-jitters, retimes it, and then oversamples it typically 256 times. And then it's cleaned up, and then it's DSP'd, noise shaped, everything else. And then that signal is sent out to the DAC, the actual digital decoding side of the chip. Now, most of the chips that did that, the 4493, for example, it was kind of split in half. So you had half the chip did the processing, half the chip did the decoding. Well, what AKM did geniusly is they went ahead and split that duty up between two chips. So the signal all comes in on the 4191. It's upsampled, it's processed, it's reclocked, it's de-jittered, it's DSP'd, the noise shaping occurs, the demultiplexer, demultiplexing occurs, the latch circuitry is there. And then those cleaned up and properly timed ones and zeros are sent to the 4499 chip, which is actually a switched resistor hybrid DAC chip. Switch resistor sounds like resistor ladder. It's not quite, but it's very, very similar. So all of the, the noisy part of the processing occurs in the 4191, and that signal is completely cleaned up and then sent to the 4499 where it's decoded. So you get this warmth and this detail and this resolution and this noise floor that's just, that is similar to Delta Sigma from measurement standpoint, but very much like resistor ladder or resistor multi-bit in sonic quality, very warm and detailed and very, very, very high resolution. So it's the best of both worlds. That's why they call it a hybrid hybrid chipset. So the unit itself, as I said, uses two of them, uses the uh, swappable op amps if you want to do that. I only listen to it with the stock TI-1656 op amps in it, and it sounds amazing, and we'll get to that in a minute. So on the front panel, we have power, we have two Toslink, we have two coax, we have USB, and then we have an AES EBU, which is basically just spit if on an XLR. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin around. By the way, you'll see these little lights in the background of the chassis, because they sent me this beautiful smoke Lexan chassis. I added that myself. It was a little kit I got from Amazon. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that off, and then I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. It just looks so pretty that way. And there's probably gonna be scotch tape on the back of it. So as you can see on the back of the unit, and again, there's scotch tape. Boy, am I making a mess of this video. Sorry, guys. I'll get that later. Anyway, so we've got USB-N, ASEBU. We've got coax and optical output. We've got coax and optical input. 
we've got four single-ended outs and we have two sets of balanced outputs and then that's your power. So very full featured, got a lot of goes into and goes out as I think that's really, really nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it over and put it on the workbench. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna look inside, we're gonna talk about it, and then I'll come back and tell you how I thought it sounded. Well, here we are looking at the inside of the Giselli Daisy. This is the front panel with all the switches on it, and this back panel with all the goes into and goes out is. And we'll start down here in this corner. This is the Giselli designed Amonero USB board. And again, that USB is asynchronous, which means that the clock here and the clock in the DAC determines the timing, not the sending unit. Where on SPDIF, the sending unit, the CD player, or whatever it happens to be, the streamer that's sending the coax or toslink signal, that's the clock that determines timing. And then there can be clocking issues, and there always is on SPDIF. But with USB, it's not a problem. It's reclocked. It's all done here in this device, not on the sending device. So the Amonero board. Now, the interesting thing is Gino's added a, a relay to this. So if it doesn't detect a signal on the Amonero board, it shuts off. And that just reduces the opportunity for any spurious noises or things like that. So as we move across, this is where the AKM uh, 4499, 4191 chipset lives. Here are all your op amps, and I'm gonna lift those wires out of the way. You can see all eight of those. They have to be swapped at the same time. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I apologize for my shaky camera work. So there's the op amp, the OPA 1656. Now, you'll see sockets two here and four on the other side. That's where the big Sparks, Sparkos 2590 chip goes. Now the ones that you guys have seen go into the J3, Pro, that is the Sparkos 2590 dual dip eight fully assembled one. And that's basically the same chip, but put into a, uh, put into a socket that can fit into the dip eight socket. Let me pull that out here. The dip eight socket there. And you can see these are already have the very sturdy pins. Very, very excellent for uh, op amp rolling. Remember notch, notch, make sure you line them up when you put them in. So very easy to swap op amps on this. The board is laid out very wonderfully. I mean, it's very well laid out. There's a lot of space between components. You got all the power supply is over on this side. All of the uh, analog, basically the op amps handle analog signal are here and all the digital signal here. Now let's talk about this chipset, which I'm so fascinated with. Ladder DACs have the ability to process PCM, 16-bit PCM words or 24-bit PCM words without any oversampling. Delta Sigma always has to oversample because they can only process a bit at a time or a few bits at a time. What AKM has done is a lot of times on other brands of chips, they're usually about this size or smaller. They do all the oversampling, processing, noise shaping, jitter reduction, all of that other stuff on one single chip. And just because everything's in close proximity, very close proximity, all of that switching noise or processing noise, whatever, I think finds its way into the signal and then adds that glare I've talked about. Well, with AKM, what they did was all the processing, all the signal, uh, DSP, noise reduction, uh, everything, you know, the, the latching, the demultiplexing, all of that occurs in one chip. And then a pure stream of ones and zeros is sent to the DAC for decoding and then out to the analog section. And so you get the benefit of a Delta Sigma from the measurement standpoint, but you get the benefit sonically of multi-bit or R to R uh, sound, I think. And it, again, the DAC chip, the 4499, is a switched resistor Delta Sigma hybrid chipset. So it's got a lot of that characteristic, that really good, warm, detailed uh, R to R sound without the stridency and fatigue and everything of, of traditional, traditional, excuse me, Delta Sigma chips. So. That's the inside of the Giselli Daisy deck. Really excellent. I get really well laid out. Very, very elegant engineering. Um, so let's button it up. I'm going to go back in the studio and I'll tell you how I think it sounds. So you can see from looking inside, it's a very elegantly engineered, very well laid out design, very thoughtful, good quality components and everything else. So how did I test it? Well, obviously at $1,200, I wanted to make sure I was keeping it price appropriate. So I've really kind of tested it with everything. And then I threw it in really expensive systems to see how it would scale up. And it did a good job. So I've had it on the Cambridge AXR100. I had it on the Audio Lab 6000A. I had it on the Arcam A25. I had it on the Cambridge CXA81. I had it on the Advanced Paris XI75. I had it on the Cambridge Evo 150. I had it on the Hegel H590. I had it on the Cambridge Edge A. I had it on the Galleon TS120SE with upgraded caps and upgraded PS Vane Horizon tubes. I've had it on the 
advanced Paris A7 sitting back there. Um, I've used my ELAC DBR62s. I've used my Wharfdale Diamond 12.4s. I used my Energy 22.2 references. I used the Triangle Magellan for, uh, Duetto 40th uh, $7,000 stand mount speakers. Everything I had, this was in it. If I wasn't reviewing a DAC, oftentimes I was listening to this. Um, as you guys know, I have a J2S, so I have a, 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 a an affinity for the particular sound quality that this has, and it does share some of those characteristics, but maybe a little better, certainly a little better. So all of the stuff that I listen to, and I listen to everything, all my crazy stuff, but the kind of the standout ones for me were from, from a detail standpoint and from a resolution standpoint was the first one was this recording from David Chesky, Jazz and the New Harmonic Primal Screen. And I am not typically a fan of quote unquote audio file recordings, but I got to give it to David Chesky. His recordings are always very good. The music is always very interesting. It's not, you know, 16th century monks with a lute in a, in a church in Transylvania recording chants. It's actually really interesting music. And jazz in the new harmonic, the primal scream one, is very reminiscent, not the same, but very reminiscent of Kind of Blue from Miles Davis and that modal kind of very improvisational, but not hard bop, not avant-garde, but very lyrical jazz. Um, just, just amazing stuff. You can tell these musicians are at the top of their game. The chops are amazing. And the way David recordings records them is with zero processing and everything. I think they just do mic levels and then it goes right into whatever the storage device for the recording is. Um, and it's done exceptionally well. So this is a wonderful recording, great you know, haunting piano in the background, great sax, great horns, great, just really well recorded. And I don't know for sure. And if I can find out, I'll put it down here. I think it was recorded in a church in either Brooklyn or New York City. Just remarkable. One of the few quote unquote audiophile recordings I can recommend. Um, to get a little better sense, it's like solo piano and a little bit more kind of traditional intimate recording. I use this recording from Brad Meldow um, called B Blues and Ballads. And Brad's a great pianist. I got turned on to him when he uh, did some work with Pat Matheny and things like that. Um, he's done a, uh, he, he is a great jazz musician, but he's also a great classical pianist as well. So great on jazz piano, great on classical piano, very good interpreter of music, very good, great technique, great style, great chops. His touch is amazing. Um, this is a very well-recorded album, very intimate. You can hear the, the body, the reverberation in the piano, the, the grand piano. Um, it's just wonderfully well done, very well recorded, um, and just a, a ton of fun to listen to. So again, Blues and Ballads from Brad Mildow. Then to get some vocals, um, and I know you guys are probably tired of me recommending operatic stuff, but Anna, Anna Sophie von Mutter, oh my goodness, her voice is, excuse me, von Otter, her voice is unbelievable. Um, and this is kind of, it's called Her Essentials. And it is opera arias, it's the famous stuff, it's shorter pieces, it, it is a collection of those, kind of like greatest hits sort of thing. It's a Deutsche Grammophone recording, so it's very, very well done. The orchestrations are very good. The orchestras are very talented. Everything is done really well, and her voice is amazing. Just from the whisper to the absolute, just so powerful. She can just sing. Her chops are amazing. Her vibrato is amazing. Her ability to hold a note, just phenomenal. And if you're not an opera fan, at least give it a listen because the vocal acrobatics she does, just wonderful. She just is so talented and it's just remarkable. So let's talk about sound. So I've done a lot of I've done a lot of DAX recently. I've done some chip based stuff. I've done some R to R based stuff, and um, I just got finished reviewing the Live Harmony, which is a twenty seven hundred dollar R to R DAC. And it in that review, which you probably have seen, or if you won't, you will. I did say it's the best sounding DAC I've ever heard. And at twenty seven hundred dollars, gee, no surprise. Um, I'll have some other DACs in maybe above that price, and we'll see where I go from there. But a remarkable DAC, and it's an R to R. So the thing about the AKM chipset is it basically functions like an R R. As I mentioned, it has all the great measurements of a Delta Sigma, high signal noise ratio, great dynamic range, great synad measurements, all that stuff. But it has the texture and warmth, the detail, and kind of the approachability of a ladder DAC or a multi-bit DAC. Um, and so this has that. Where this does, I think, a, a really, really good job, especially given its price point, it Look, let, we'll get this out of the way right up the front. It is the best chip-based DAC I've heard. Better than the Audiolab M DAC Plus that I reviewed recently. 
It is remarkably good. Um, it is to Shelly Dax as a general rule, and this is, fits right into my sonic profile, is they have to do really, really good with bass. They dig deep. They're very, very good. Are they the last word in articulation? No, not compared to a $2,700 DAC, but anything in and around its price point, maybe upwards of you know, $2,000, absolutely does an amazing job. Just remarkable. Bass is absolutely articulate and, and, and well-detailed and well-represented. Um, and again, I think the DAC being the first, to me, Biggest source, first guy, DAC is the first link in the chain because I use Artivana, so it's bit perfect. So it's getting a perfect signal. And it's this the job of this is to process that signal, make it into an analog waveform to get it to the amp, to get it to the speakers, to get it to your ears, and do it without coloration, without modification, without molestation. And this does a very good job at it. Absolutely better than any other chip-based DAC I've heard. So bass is very good. It's fast. It's articulate. Um, it it imparts a bit of a warmth to the sound on its own. And, and I noticed that with the J2S that I own. Um, they have a very simil similar sonic character, but this is more detailed. It's got more drive. It's got a little bit better articulation, a little better agility, especially through from the kind of um, mid bass all the way up through the treble. Really, it extends, I think, further than the J2S in treble. Um, and again, I listen to this with the stock op amps, and I listen to my J2S to compare with stock op amps. Roll the op amps in the J2S, and it refines it a little bit, but it doesn't really approach this, even with uh, the uh, uh, optional op, uh, op amps in it. This is much. This is better resolution, better detail retrieval, a better sense of space and air and room um, and decay, and, I'm, and, I'm, and it is incrementally better. It is, um, but without question, better. It is better than the uh, any of the ESS-based chips I've heard. I recently did the SMSL SU-6, because I won't say it the way it's spelled, um, and it sounded the way it's spelled. Um, this just smokes it, and th that's about $1,000 as well. This is a, a better-sounding DAC. Is it as fancy-looking? Is it milled out of billet aluminum? No, but I don't care. What I want is all of the energy and effort it, that's got, gone into the engineering of this, not to go into the case or the looks, but to go into the sound quality. And this does that exceptionally well. So wonderful. Um, it just rendered everything really, really well. Now, obviously I've put it on some very, very expensive gear and I couldn't trip it up. Now I could hear the differences between it and more the more expensive DAC, the Live Harmony, but the differences were subtle and it took an $11,000 integrated amp and a $7,000 pair of speakers or a $6,000 amp to kind of bring those that difference out. When I listen to the Live Harmony or the, the Daisy on something like the CXA81 or the uh, Advanced Paris XI-75, both outstanding integrated amplifiers, they don't quite have the resolution of an $11,000 Hegel. So you don't really hear those differences that much. If you're staying price appropriate in and around that, you know, integrated amplifier around anywhere from a thousand to 2000 bucks, speakers anywhere from probably eight or $900 a pair to, you know, maybe $2,000 a pair, this will perform and will provide that equipment with the absolute best signal so they can perform at their highest level. It does that exceptionally well. So big recommendation. At $1,200, I think it's an absolute value. I think it's really, really good. Um, I just really like it, and I'm going to hate to send it back. So the Gishelli Daisy, big thumbs up, big recommendation, best chip-based deck I've heard to date, without question, and just amazing. If you're interested in one, there'll be a link to the Gishelli website. I don't have an affiliation with them, and that's fine. Um, they're very good people and a wonderful family. And so please support them if you're in the market for something like this. Hopefully, you like the video. Hopefully, you would be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. Hopefully, you would be willing to support the channel. There's a thank you button at the bottom of the window. And if you wish to join the channel, there will be a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description. And as I said, there'll be a link to the Gishelli website so you can get more information. You have to request information from them about the Daisy. There will also be the links to the three albums I spoke of. There will be Amazon affiliate links. You know the drill on those. My playlists. Um, please continue to send me playlists. I love them for the community post. Check out the community post. There's great music there. Comment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, you know, what are you thinking about DAX? I'm a big fan of the AKM chipset. 
I'm a big fan of the way Gino Giselli implements it. I've also had some other really good implementations of that AKM chipset. And I think we're just starting to scratch the future on what AKM is going to bring out with this kind of advanced Velvet Sound Verita technology that they've developed. So it's just wonderful. So share my share my share my thoughts. I'll, I've already shared my thoughts. Please share with me your thoughts. Please comment. Let me know. Um, I think that's everything I need to say. Yep. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, please follow me on Instagram. I'm Ed Holmwood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, and now it's your job to sit back, relax, and listen to some of your favorite music, maybe on a really wonderful AKM chip-based deck like the Gishelli Daisy. Thank you so very much for your time. I am grateful for it. I hope you have a wonderful day.